What's gaming gamers? Today I've got a build for you using the Voidwalker Warlock subclass and the Nothing Manacles exotic arms. This build is designed to spam grenades incredibly fast, making use of subclass elements, armor mods, weapon perks, and the Nothing Manacles themselves to achieve that goal. The Nothing Manacles exotic arms and its exotic perk Scatter Charge work to enhance the power of and frequency with which you throw your scatter grenades. Firstly, Scatter Charge will simply grant you a second Scatter Grenade Charge, meaning you effectively double the total uptime of your grenade with this exotic. Additionally, Scatter Charge will grant the projectiles summoned by your Scatter Grenades tracking capabilities. This is the exact same buff as the one granted by the Chaos Accelerant aspect, meaning while you have the Nothing Manacles equipped, you are essentially getting the buffs of all three of the Voidwalker aspects. Additionally, Nothing Manacles doesn't require you to charge your grenade before throwing it to receive the same buffs as Chaos Accelerant, meaning your grenade's cast time is instant compared to its charge time with Chaos Accelerant. With that, I can get into the subclass setup for this build. As per usual, I'll put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer. After that, I'll go into detail about why I've chosen each specific element to the subclass, as well as alternative options should there be any. For the super, run the Cataclysm Nova Bomb. Run the Healing Rift, whichever jump you prefer, the Pocket Singularity Melee, the Scatter Grenade, the Child of the Old Gods aspect, the Feed the Void aspect, Echo of Cessation, Echo of Instability, Echo of Persistence, and Echo of Undermining. To go in-depth as to the subclass build, firstly the supers. I choose to run the Cataclysm Nova Bomb as it does both more initial burst damage and more overall damage to an enemy than the Vortex Nova Bomb does. Cataclysm, however, does have a hitbox, meaning for a lot of boss damage phases in raids and dungeons, it will block your teammate's damage as it makes its way to its target. The Vortex Nova Bomb does less damage than the Cataclysm Nova Bomb, but is better for boss damage phases as it doesn't prevent yourself or your teammates from dealing additional damage to said boss while the Nova Bomb makes its way to the boss. Either super works to use, though, with the Cataclysm being better for activities wherein you need to melt champions or mini-bosses frequently, and Vortex being better for activities with lots of boss damage phases like dungeons or raids. Furthermore, both of the Nova Bombs will be receiving a 20% buff to their damage in PvE when Season 21 releases, which will hopefully make them feel more like supers and less like large grenades. The Healing Rift will be best for this build, as it will pair with the Child of the Old Gods aspect to grant you additional grenade and melee energy, which will increase the uptime of your grenades, allowing you to throw more. I'll talk more about that specific synergy when I describe the aspects. The Pocket Singularity Melee is the only melee ability, but it isn't a bad one. Upon damaging an enemy, it will make them volatile, which will cause them to take additional explosion damage the next time they are damaged by any source. The Pocket Singularity also pushes enemies back when hit by it, making it helpful for either retreating from enemies rushing you, or to give you more space if you're in close proximity to multiple enemies. The Scatter Grenade is the only grenade that will work with this build, as it's the only grenade buffed by the Nothing Manacles exotic arms. When the Scatter Grenade contacts either an enemy or the ground, it will release 8 submunitions, which will then, because of the Nothing Manacles exotic arms, track to enemies and explode near or on them, dealing damage. The initial impact of the grenade does a small amount of damage itself, but is outshadowed heavily by the damage provided by the 8 submunitions released after the grenade's impact. Onto the aspect, firstly, the Child of the Old Gods aspect. Child of the Old Gods will grant you a Void Soul upon the casting of your Rift, which will travel to the first target damaged after summoning that Rift and will drain any enemies within its radius, damaging them for 13 seconds and weakening any enemy for 5 seconds. The Weaken applied by the Void Soul is reapplied every time the Void Soul damages an enemy, meaning the 5 second duration will only start to deteriorate once the enemy has either left the Void Soul's influence or once the Void Soul dissipates. Void Soul, while draining a target, grants you different buffs depending on which Rift you currently have equipped. If you have the Healing Rift equipped, the Void Soul will grant you 3.5% grenade and melee energy every 1.4 seconds so long as it's draining an enemy. If you have the Empowering Rift equipped, the Void Soul will grant you 25 health every 1.1 seconds so long as it's draining an enemy. Furthermore, upon killing an enemy who is drained, you will receive a differing amount of class ability energy depending on that enemy's tier. The granted grenade and melee energy are the reason this build runs the Healing Rift as it will help with both abilities' uptimes increasing your overall damage output. You don't really need the Healing Rift's healing capabilities, as you'll have Devour up nearly 100% of the time in almost all activities in the game, so the ability energy is really the only reason to run this one. If you want the Empowering Rift's 20% boost to weapon damage, feel free to run that instead. You won't receive the extra grenade and melee energy, but it will boost your weapon's damage while standing inside it, which could help with champ busting or boss damage when you need it. The second aspect is Feed the Void. Feed the Void is incredibly simple. Upon killing an enemy with a Void ability, you will be granted Devour for its maximum duration of 10 seconds. Devour is a really strong keyword and will be leveraged heavily with this build. Any kill while Devour is active will add 5 seconds to its timer up to the 10 second maximum. If you get another Void ability kill while Devour is active, it will refresh Devour to its maximum of 10 seconds. While Devour is active, any kill you get instantly fully heals you and grants you a differing amount of grenade energy based on the tier of enemy killed. This does very well to both increase your survivability as well as your grenade uptime, both of which are very important for this build. As you'll be killing enemies and throwing grenades constantly, you'll have Devour nearly 100% of the time, which is a positive feedback loop that will stay active so long as there are enemies for you to kill. The Devour buff's granted grenade energy also stacks with the Demolitionist weapon perk, but I'll talk more about that when I go over weapons later in the video. 
Moving on to the fragments, firstly Echo of Cessation. Echo of Cessation will cause any finisher you perform to make nearby enemies volatile as well as creating a Void Breach upon killing any volatile enemy. The main reason this fragment is chosen is the creation of Void Breaches. Void Breaches, upon collection, will grant you 12.5% class ability energy which will increase the uptime of your healing rift allowing you to summon more Void Souls via the Child of the Old Gods aspect. This will do well to grant yourself more grenade energy overall. Void Breaches incur a 5 second cooldown upon creation, meaning you can only create one every 5 seconds, but that doesn't make them any less helpful in increasing your overall ability loop. For the second fragment, Echo of Instability will grant your Void Weapons volatile rounds upon getting a kill with your grenade. As you'll be throwing grenades and killing enemies with them constantly, you'll be at a near 100% uptime on volatile rounds. This, in turn, will cause you to effectively summon Void Breaches on cooldown via the Echo of Cessation fragment. Additionally, if your Void Weapons are ones which don't have any anti-champion capabilities, Volatile Rounds will allow them to pierce barrier shields, which is a significant buff to the efficacy of your Void Weapons on top of the already increased DPS due to Volatile Explosions. Furthermore, Echo of Instability will increase your Strength stat by 10 points, which is a nice boost to your armor's stats. The third fragment is Echo of Persistence. Echo of Persistence will increase the duration of any Void Buff applied to you, those being Invisibility, Overshield, and Devour. As this build has no way of turning invisible or granting itself an overshield, I'll specifically talk about the Devour increase. Devour gets its maximum duration increased by a flat 5 seconds, meaning when you're granted Devour via the Feed the Void aspect, you'll be granted it for 15 seconds instead of 10, which is a 50% increase to its duration. Final blows that aren't caused by Void abilities will still only increase its duration by 5 seconds, but its maximum being increased to 15 helps significantly in higher difficulty content when chaining together kills can be more difficult. Echo of Persistence does lower your recovery stat by 10 points, however, so keep that in mind when putting together your armor build. Lastly for Fragments is Echo of Undermining. Echo of Undermining will cause your grenades to apply the Weaken debuff to any enemy damaged by them for 5 seconds. Weaken is a debuff that will cause enemies afflicted to take 15% more damage from all sources, move 20% slower, and aim more inaccurately for its duration. Echo of Undermining works really nicely with the Scatter Grenade, as each one of the 8 submunitions will apply Weaken, meaning you can get 7 of those submunitions to deal 15% more damage than they would normally if they all hit the same target. This also means that the Weaken debuff's duration, after being applied to the enemy, will only start decreasing after all 8 submunitions have exploded, suggesting they all damage the same target, which will cause that enemy to be weakened for slightly longer. Unfortunately, Echo of Undermining comes with a severe 20 point deficit to your discipline stat, and as much as that's very steep for a fragment, I believe being able to apply Weaken to enemies on command, as well as effectively increasing your grenade's damage by 15%, is worth the loss of stats. If you want an alternative option, you could swap out Echo of Undermining for Echo of Expulsion. Echo of Expulsion will cause enemies killed with Void Abilities to explode, dealing damage to enemies nearby. Using Echo of Expulsion over Echo of Undermining would lower the single target damage potential of the Scatter Grenades, but it would increase the efficiency with which they could clear large groups of adds as the submunitions of the Scatter Grenade tend to focus on one target instead of multiple. It would also nullify the 20 point reduction to your Discipline stat in favor of a 10 point increase to your Intellect stat. That would help significantly with your overall armor stats, especially if you're not one to farm endgame activities for high stat armor and don't have much. Use both of them to see which one you like more, and use the one you enjoy the most. With the subclass build out of the way, I'll get into the seasonal artifact mods if you're watching this video during Season 20, the Season of Defiance. On screen, you're seeing the artifact setup I use when running this build, and I'll now highlight some important mods, explain what they do, and why they're chosen. In the first column, run whichever anti-champion mods you need for the content you'll be running. Volatile Rounds will grant anti-barrier capabilities to any void weapon you have equipped that doesn't already have an anti-champion capability, but that's hard to rely on, so I recommend running an anti-barrier mod anyways. In the second column, run the authorized mods for Void Weapons and Grenades. These mods will lower the cost of any armor mods that affect either your Void Weapons or Grenades to a cost of 1 energy, which will allow you to slot more mods into your armor. In the third column, first run the Shatter Orbs mod. Shatter Orbs will summon an Orb of Power upon destroying a combatant's shield with the corresponding energy type. Shatter Orbs only summons an orb the first time you destroy any one combatant's shield, meaning you can't let its shield regenerate to summon infinite orbs. Next in the third column, run the Volatile Flow mod. Volatile Flow will grant your Void Weapons Volatile Rounds for 13 seconds upon the collection of an Orb of Power. This will do well to increase your Volatile Rounds uptime, as well as increasing the utility of any Orbs of Power created. In the fourth column, run the Bricks from Beyond mod. Bricks from Beyond will grant your weapons an effective 25% chance to summon a Brick of Heavy Ammo for yourself and allies upon killing any Elite, Miniboss, or Boss enemy with Void Weapons. This is fantastic for making sure your Heavy Weapon has plenty of ammo if you need it, which is especially helpful in endgame activities wherein Heavy Ammo is important. In the fifth and final column, firstly run the Void Weapon Channeling mod. Void Weapon Channeling, upon getting a kill with a Void Weapon with any of your Void Abilities charged, will grant you a damage boost to your Void Weapons. This boost is 10% with 1 Ability charged, 17% with 2 Abilities charged, 22% with 3 Abilities charged, and 25% with 4 Abilities charged. Void Weapon Channeling does not stack with any Weapon Surge mods in your legs, but that's fine as this build doesn't take advantage of any of those. Lastly for Artifact mods is the Prismatic Transfer mod. 
This mod will grant your teammates a 20% boost to their outgoing weapon damage upon the casting of your super, so long as their subclass element differs from yours. This damage boost doesn't stack with any other damage boosts, like Radiant or Weapons of Light, but it's a helpful boost to your teammates' weapon damage while they don't have any other boosts active. With artifact mods out of the way, I can now get into the armor setup for this build. Firstly, I'll go over stat distribution. In the top three stack grouping of Mobility, Resilience, and Recovery, spec into Resilience and Recovery fairly equally with bias towards Resilience and don't worry about Mobility. Resilience will grant you 3% damage resistance to all incoming damage per tier up to a maximum of 30% at tier 10. This makes Resilience a fantastic stat to focus as damage resistance will keep you alive for longer in all activities. Recovery is another stat that's important to have, and for a Warlock more so. Recovery is the Warlock's class stat, meaning on top of the increases to health and shield regeneration rate and delay, it also decreases the base cooldown of your rifts. Mobility isn't really necessary for this build, as it only affects movement speed and jump height, which are two things you don't need for this build. In the bottom three stack grouping of Discipline, Intellect, and Strength, focus Discipline first, with Strength as a secondary stat, and ignore Intellect for the most part. Discipline will be important, as it will govern the base cooldown of your grenades. Strength isn't as important, as the Pocket Singularity isn't used very often, nor is it used to get kills anyways. Intellect you can effectively ignore. My armor's stats are 24 Mobility, 90 Resilience, 71 Recovery, 80 Discipline, 30 Intellect, and 52 Strength. With armor stats out of the way, I'll get into some armor mods I recommend for this build. I'll first put everything I use on screen as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer. Once that's done, I'll detail what each mod does and explain why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative mods if I feel there are any. On your helmet, run two Ashes to Assets mods and a Harmonic Siphon mod. On your arms, run a Firepower mod and a Grenade Kickstart mod. On your chest piece, run a Charged Up mod and whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running. On your legs, run an Innervation mod, an Orbs of Restoration mod, and a Stacks on Stacks mod. On your Bond, run two Bomber mods and a Reaper mod. To start detailing the mods, I'll first go over the Helmet. The two Ashes to Assets mods will grant you significantly more super energy for getting kills with your grenades than you would normally. That's beneficial for this build, as you'll be getting kills with your grenades very frequently, which will generate you a significant amount of super energy, meaning you'll have your Nova Bomb up more frequently. The Harmonic Siphon mod will summon an Orb of Power upon getting a multi-kill with any Void Weapon, which just increases the utility of any Void Weapons you have equipped. Summoning Orbs will be beneficial, as this build makes use of Armor Charge in the form of the Grenade Kickstart mod, as well as simply granting you even more super energy. If you want, you can swap out one of the Ashes to Assets mods for either a Special or Heavy Ammo Finder. I don't find myself needing the ammo that often, especially during the Season of Defiance with the Bricks from Beyond Artifact mod. However, if you're running an activity with the Famine modifier, aren't playing during the Season of Defiance, or otherwise just feel like you're not getting the ammo drops you want, Finders are a great option. For the mods on your arms, firstly the Firepower mod. Firepower will summon an Orb of Power upon getting a kill with your Grenade, which you can then pick up in order to grant you both Super Energy as well as Armor Charge. Picking up this Orb of Power will feed into the Grenade Kickstart mod, which will work to refund you Grenade Energy upon the throwing of your Grenade. Grenade Kickstart will still refund you Grenade Energy if you don't have any stacks of Armor Charge, meaning for higher difficulty content where it may not be entirely safe to pick up Orbs of Power, you could forego the Firepower mod in favor of a second Grenade Kickstart mod. Every Kickstart mod is essentially treated as a stack of Armor Charge for the purposes of its specific ability Kickstart, which means two Grenade Kickstarts would refund you the same amount of energy as you'd receive with one Grenade Kickstart and the one stack of Armor Charge you'd gain by picking up the Orb of Power summoned by Firepower. However, if you're running stacks on stacks on your legs, it will be less efficient, as any one Orb of Power will grant you two stacks of Armor Charge. My Armor build allows me to have a plus five stat mod in my arms, which I take advantage of by running two Grenade Kickstart mods and one Firepower mod, giving me the best of both worlds. However, that isn't always possible, so play around with the exact configuration of mods and use whichever feels best for you. Onto your chest piece, the Charged Up mod will increase your maximum stacks of Armor Charge from three to four. This increases the amount of grenade energy refunded by Grenade Kickstart, suggesting you fill up on Armor Charge. As this build takes advantage of stacks on stacks, you'll only need to pick up two Orbs of Power to get four stacks of Armor Charge, which means you'll be refunded significantly more grenade energy on average than if you weren't to have either stacks on stacks or charged up. The resistance mods you choose will simply increase your resistance to a specific damage type by 20% with one mod equipped or 25% with two mods equipped. Resistance mods don't benefit from a third copy, which is a known bug and will hopefully be fixed in the future. But for now, there's no reason to have more than two of any one damage type resistance mod. Even having two of one type gives significantly diminished returns versus just running one of two separate damage type resistance mods, but play around with the exact configuration you need for yourself and the content you'll be running. You do generally want to change your resistance mods when going into different content, as there's different damage types to be wary of depending on the activity you'll run. As for your legs, firstly the Innervation mod. Innervation will grant you 10% grenade energy upon the collection of an Orb of Power, which you'll be doing often anyways to grant yourself Armor Charge for your Grenade Kickstart mods. Innervation will simply increase the overall uptime of your grenade, letting you throw it more often. The Orbs of Restoration mod will grant you 10-15% energy for your least charged ability. This will often be your Healing Rift, which will help significantly to increase the uptime of your Void Soul, and thus your Grenade and Melee Energy passive regeneration. Lastly, perhaps most importantly, the Stacks on Stacks mod will double the amount of Armor Charge you get per Orb picked up from 1 stack to 2 stacks. 
This helps immensely with the Grenade Kickstart mod, as the more stacks of armor charge you have when throwing your grenade, the more grenade energy the Kickstart mod can refund. When combined with the Firepower mod in your arms, your grenade kills themselves will grant you armor charge, which is a really good feedback loop to continuously refund yourself grenade energy. Lastly, on the Bond, the two Bomber mods will refund you 25% grenade energy upon the use of your class ability. This will help you significantly with throwing more grenades, as the Void Soul summoned by the Healing Rift will also grant you grenade energy while it's draining an enemy. Bomber will still grant you 20% grenade energy if you're only running one mod, so you can remove one Bomber mod in favor of an Outreach mod if you want your melee ability to be granted energy concurrently to your grenade when casting your Rift. The Reaper mod will cause your next weapon final blow after casting your Rift to summon an Orb of Power, which will grant you ability energy and armor charge when picked up to further the amount of grenades you can throw. With the armor setup now done, I'll get into some weapon recommendations I have for this build. Firstly, any weapon with the Demolitionist perk will work very well with this build, and any grenade spam build you use. When using a primary or heavy weapon, Demolitionist will grant you 10% grenade energy upon getting a kill with that weapon. Special weapons are a little different, however. Laves, Trace Rifles, and Special Grenade Launchers with Demolitionist will also only grant you 10% Grenade Energy per kill, but Fusion Rifles, Shotguns, and Sniper Rifles with Demolitionist will grant you 20% Grenade Energy per kill. I won't go into too much detail about Special Weapons with Demolitionist, as there are a lot of them. However, I will describe my favorite one, the Deliverance Fusion Rifle from the Acquisition and Exhibition Encounters in the Vow of the Disciple Raid. This weapon is currently the only special weapon in the game to be able to roll the combination of Chokelip and Demolitionist, making it fantastic for stunning Overload Champions, Unstoppable Champions, and generating you 20% grenade energy per kill. Furthermore, on top of the granted grenade energy from Demolitionist, if you have the Devourer buff active, you'll be granted even more grenade energy per kill, as kills while Devourer is active grant you anywhere between 7.5% and 20% grenade energy per kill. Onto energy weapons, as I've said before, any weapon that can roll Demolitionist will work, but any Void weapon will also work very well. For specific recommendations, my first one has to be the Unforgiven Submachine Gun from the Vault and Keitel Encounters in the Duality Dungeon. For perks I recommend you hunt for if you farm for an Unforgiven, in its third column, Demolitionist is the best perk you can get for this build specifically. If you're hunting for a general use Unforgiven, Feeding Frenzy is also a solid choice, but I prefer Demolitionist overall, and especially with this or any grenade spam build. In its fourth column, Adrenaline Junkie will pair especially well with Demolitionist, so if you're looking for a perk to hunt for for use with this build specifically, Adrenaline Junkie is the one to choose. However, as a secondary option, Repulsor Brace would also be a great choice, as you'll be constantly granted overshields when killing enemies who are void debuffed, increasing your survivability even more. The Unforgiven you're seeing me use in the background gameplay to this video has Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie on it. Next, the Bottom Dollar Hand Cannon from the Gambit Weapon Pool. This weapon is acquirable from completing Gambit matches and focusing engrams at Drifter in the Tower. For rules I recommend, in its third column, my favorites are Feeding Frenzy or Rapid Hit, because I personally hate the reloads on hand cannons, and both Feeding Frenzy and Rapid Hit help to remedy that. In its fourth column, Demolitionist is the best option, but if you can't get that to roll, Explosive Payload is a great alternative for increasing the weapon's damage output. My bottom dollar has Feeding Frenzy and Demolitionist on it. Lastly, the Ness's Ablation Precision Slug Frame Shotgun from the Cataclysm, Scission, and Nezarek encounters in the Root of Nightmares raid. This shotgun is fantastic for void builds, as it can roll the ideal combo of Repulsor Brace in its third column and Destabilizing Rounds in its fourth column. However, it can also roll Demolitionist in its third column, and Demolitionist on a shotgun will grant you 20% grenade energy per kill, making it a very attractive alternative to Repulsor Brace. In its fourth column, in favor of Destabilizing Rounds, you can also run Paracausal Affinity, which will grant you a 20% boost to damage upon getting a kill with a matching alignment type for 6 seconds. This includes kills via both the weapon itself as well as grenades, meaning the combination of Demolitionist and Paracausal Affinity will grant Ness's Ablation 20% extra damage nearly 100% of the time. My crafted Ness's Ablation has Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds on it, but I'm debating crafting another one so I can run Demolitionist and Paracausal Affinity, as that sounds like a really fun, really good combination. For heavy weapons, my biggest recommendation would be the Commemoration Machine Gun from the final Tanix encounter in the Deepstone Crypt Raid. Commemoration is craftable and is a very good machine gun. The role to hunt for is Reconstruction in its third column and Killing Tally in its fourth column. Reconstruction, when paired with the Extended Mag Magazine perk, will increase Commemoration's magazine size to a total of 150 rounds, letting you spray without letting up for a very long time. Killing Tally will grant you a 10% boost to the weapon's damage for every kill you get, up to 3 stacks for a 30% boost to damage. Killing Tally normally goes away after reloading or stowing the weapon, but with Reconstruction, you don't have to do either of those things to let it refill passively back to 150 bullets in the magazine, which effectively grants you a 30% boost to damage for as long as you hold the weapon. As for exotics, anyone that's void will do well with this build. There are a couple weapons that apply keywords, however. Ones that apply Volatile are the Deterministic Chaos Machine Gun and the Leviathan's Breath Heavy Bow. Exotics that suppress targets are the Ruinous Effigy Trace Rifle, the Wave Splitter Trace Rifle, the Tractor Cannon Heavy Shotgun, and the Two-Tailed Fox Rocket Launcher. Exotics that apply the Weakened Debuff are the Deterministic Chaos Machine Gun, the Heart Shadow Sword, and the Tractor Cannon Heavy Shotgun. With weapons out of the way, I'll get into a quick playstyle that suits this build. It's very simple. Kill everything with your grenade.
To be a bit more specific, when entering an engagement, throw your grenade at an enemy who will die to it. This will create an orb of power with the firepower mod. Collect this orb to grant yourself armor charge and throw another grenade. If you're killing enemies with a demolitionist and or void weapon, you'll be generating grenade energy in the form of the demolitionist perk, orbs of power, or both, so collect any orbs you create and continue this loop. You don't necessarily have to get a kill with your grenade either. If there's a high health elite or mini boss enemy, and you're running the echo of undermining fragment, you can use your grenade to apply the weakened debuff to that enemy, allowing you to deal 15% more damage to them. This build is entirely centered around throwing your grenades as often as you can, and to achieve that, simply kill enemies with grenades, void weapons or weapons with demolitionist, collect orbs of power, and use your healing rift's void soul to drain enemies to regenerate grenade energy. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, leaving a like helps the video to be seen by more people. If you have any questions, alternative ideas, or constructive criticisms, leave them in the comments. I read all of them and reply to most of them. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribing to my channel will notify you when new videos go live in the future. Speaking of new videos, there won't be one next Tuesday, the day of the new season. I want to at least take the first week to learn about the new sandbox and the new seasonal artifact before putting out any build guides. I will try to at least have my team's day one completion of the dungeon up next Friday and will hopefully be starting some guide creation on that in the near future. But expect one last Season 20 Warlock build guide this Friday. With that, I want to thank you again for watching and I will see you this Friday. Have a great day!